This is the Lifestyle Business Podcast, Episode 8. You know, as our audience grows, I'd like to start to tap into the subscriber base more and get an idea of what everyone's interested in, in hearing about. And that's really going to help me to capture ideas during my days and start to formulate uh, content that I can and deliver on the podcast. I'm sure you're starting to get an idea that my interests are pretty broad, I'm especially interested in... Um, entrepreneurship and travel and the mindset that's required to, to uh, execute both at the same time. Uh, of course, under that umbrella, there's just so many interesting topics. So if you have um, a particular topic you would like the podcast to address, it would be awesome to hear from you. And you can just kick an email to dan at lifestyle-business-podcast.com. Hi, this is Dan Andrews, and I'd like to thank you for downloading the Lifestyle Business Podcast. This is a podcast aimed at individuals who are interested in unconventional approaches to life, business, and their careers. Hey everybody, tonight I wanted to talk really quickly about fear. And I've been inspired by a great video that Frank Kern, uh, who's a famous internet marketer, um, he's the guy with the medium length blonde hair who's always sort of driving around in his Porsche uh, going surfing with a, a really cool kind of charismatic dude. And uh, he sent out a video. I'm on his list. As uh, I would definitely recommend getting on Frank Kern's list. The reason is, is that he is the master at writing those great um, list emails. And uh, just by reading what he sends to you, you can get a great idea of how to run an information business. So go get on Frank Kern's list if you're interested in internet marketing or selling information products over the web. So he sent out a great video the other day where he sat down with John Reese and Tony Robbins, who is, you know, a multimillionaire, pretty famous motivational guru. And they wanted to talk about the topic of fear. And I think Tony has an interesting and unique and really valuable approach to fear. The question they were trying to answer is, is why don't people act on on things that they know can be good for them? The answer that Tony supplied is fear. The theory goes that if humans are 100% certain about the results an action will achieve, and then of course they want those results, they will act. It's fear or it's uncertainty about the outcome of your actions that end up preventing you from taking action. Understanding like how these things contribute to each other are really, really important for entrepreneurs and lifestyle designers and travelers or whatever. The reason that all this stuff tends to run together, um, all this sort of entrepreneurship advice is very similar to self-help advice, is very similar to dating advice, and they all start to run together. And there's a bunch of other areas, of course, that are similar. And I think the reason is, is because all, all of these groups of people are trying to tap into this idea of transformation. If you're an entrepreneur, you need the world to change and you need to change yourself. You know, if you make $50,000 a year, from a salary, you want to start a company that makes you $50,000 a year that allows you to travel. And then you need to grow that company to create a million dollars a year or even more. These are the kinds of goals that entrepreneurs have and and they require necessarily some kind of personal transformation. When you're transforming, perhaps the biggest thing that stands in your way is fear. I have a really quick four-step program that I use to overcome fear when I come across it. And I wanted to share that with you quickly tonight and I definitely would like to develop more in-depth mindset types of content that focuses a lot on what you think your potential is, what you're capable of visualizing for yourself, and how to determine how you're going to achieve your desired outcomes. I think what a trap that a lot of people get in is that they desire outcomes that they don't believe, truly believe that they can create. And part of that is that they don't, they're not exposing themselves to the right kind of actions that create the outcomes they want. I think nine times out of ten, the reason that they're staying away from the actions that create the kinds of outcomes they want is fear. They're scared that they're not capable, that they can't provide enough value, that the gatekeepers are going in the way, they're not qualified enough, they're not smart enough, or whatever. Tackling the fear issue is something that's really important, and I've found as an entrepreneur, it's something that I wrestle with every day. So developing a process with which to deal with fear is important. Understanding how valuable it can be to deal with fear. I think, you know, I've evolved in in my entrepreneurial journey to start to look at fear as a challenge and an exciting challenge and something that I'm willing to confront. 
you know, I guess a lot of times I think that there's this talk about fear and mindset and self-help and even bringing up the word Tony Robbins. Some like more proper business texts, they don't talk about this stuff like as if um, entrepreneurs just kind of like popped out of the womb and like developed Facebook and they're all over the magazines. And every entrepreneur that I know on the ground takes self-transformation seriously, understanding yourself seriously. If, if you're going to be a great entrepreneur, you need to not only understand yourself, but what your impact is on the people around you, how you can influence their action to create better out. It all really circles back to getting people to overcome their fear and reach their, their best potential. So let me share with you really quickly my four-part series that I wrote about a year ago. And certainly uh, I'm going to do some tweaking to this formula. But it, what inspired this formula was uh, a pretty pedestrian event. In fact, maybe not as scary as making a big important phone call to a competitor or a big important new account or something that I've done in the past that always been very nerve wracking. Um, something that I've had a lot of fear about was terminating employees. You know, oftentimes it's the right decision to fire somebody, but it's extremely difficult. I've used some tactics to overcome the fear. But in this case, I was scuba diving and it was the first time I was ever scuba di diving. And I happened to end up underneath, I guess, 25, 30 feet of water the first time. I shouldn't have been underneath that much water, <laughs> I found out later. Uh, I happened to have a friend and it was kind of cool that we could go out with less supervision and stuff, but in retrospect, I probably could have used them. I, when I got down to the bottom, I sat on the bottom of the ocean and it was pretty painful and pressure in my ears and everything. And I remember looking up the water 25 feet ahead of me and you could kind of see the, the glassy water with the sun shining through. And the first thought on my mind was, oh my gosh, you've never been under this much water before. You know, I was sort of overcome with anxiety. Instinctively, I, I didn't even have this in my mind at the time. I kind of kicked in uh, a technique that I had been using in business to overcome this fear at the bottom of the ocean when sort of the clock was ticking, literally. And uh, here are the things that I did to get over uh, the fear that I experienced. Number one, I slowed down. I just kicked into my head and I said, you have to slow down. And I started with my breathing. And in, this is, you know, related to scuba, but it, as in everything, slow breathing is central. Don't let your mind run circles around you. Apply it to your lungs. If you can focus on one thing, this is a, taking an element of simplicity and control and bringing your body under your control. And I think the central place you can do that is with your breathing. So immediately, I forgot about the water I was underneath and focused 100% on my breathing. Number two, imagine those who are successful and describe how they achieved success in one sentence. So if you're experiencing fear, identify someone who has been successful in a similar circumstance, and tr you can always find one, you know that, and articulate it in one sentence how they achieved their success. I'm sitting at the bottom of the water and it's amazing how, how many thoughts can run through your mind in this time. <laughs> And I understood when I was sort of freaking out at the bottom of the ocean that this was a commonplace thing. I mean, I could literally look around and see that all my friends were in the water around me. They were doing it. Why was I seemingly in some sort of emergency situation? In that moment, the way that I concretely uh, summed up what they were doing uh, in that circumstance that I wasn't doing was they moved and breathed very slow. And I don't know if I said that exactly, but I looked around and I said, these guys are slow because the, sort of the overriding thought wasn't just general anxiety at the time. It was, I can't get enough air. And so my sentence was, they moved and breathed slow. Of course, I'm thinking this while I'm breathing slow. And you can use this kind of one sentence summation of everything. It's, a, it's, a, it's like a lever of simplicity. If you can just boil down the success pivot, if you will, to one sentence, all you need to do is capture that sentence. Three, close your eyes and imagine yourself as modeling the one sentence. Imagine yourself acting on the one sentence. Repeat it as a mantra. A mantra is just something that uh, you repeat in meditation. Visualize yourself making the motions. So in the scuba situation, I imagine myself taking slow, deep breaths. I imagine myself swimming with other scuba divers and breathing comfortably. All while <laughs> sort of freaking out my first time at the bottom of the ocean, I am repeating this mantra to myself. They are moving and breathing slow. And number four is take action. Now in the scuba situation, I'm already taking action because of the first three steps. Slow down. 
Imagine those who are successful and describe it in one sentence. Close your eyes and imagine yourself as modeling the one sentence. So number four, take action is just a natural next step. Trust the simple path to action that you have identified. Know that your ability to act on clear actions against fear is what sets you apart and will result in the most rewarding experiences you'll have. And I think that's really the biggest thing. I mean, scuba is just one example, but obviously, you know, not nearly the most important uh, impact of this kind of overcoming fear. You know, nine times out of 10, the things that are the most rewarding require you to overcome an obstacle. And that's for a bunch of reasons. I mean, one might be there's a lot of pressure in becoming as a person and, and moving yourself to the next level, whether that be wealth in your business and your relationships and the kinds of experience you're having. But another thing is that, you know, for mediocre actions, there's generally mediocre results. In order to, business coaches will tell you how hard it is to create a successful business that supplies you with passive income that allows you to travel the world. Maybe they wouldn't sell as many products. But the truth is, is that although it is hard, and it has to be, you know, for great rewards, you need to do great things. If you can break things down and take it step by step as a routine, as a daily ritual, as a daily overcoming of fear, rather than trying to do it all in one big hump. You know, there's no business lottery ticket. Although I don't think people are hesitant to share them with you. So, um, but you know, I don't know many people who sort of woke up one morning and popped out of business and now they're set. And if you know, I mean, I'd love to hear those stories, but it's like we said in earlier episodes, that's no strategy. So the strategy here has to be understanding the, the true reward that comes from challenging yourself and overcoming fear like this. So I was able to apply this simple method in the scuba situation and, and overcome my anxiety in about 10 seconds or, you know, right before my small lung capacity ran out. And uh, I've been plan I've been uh, practicing this one for a few years and I've, I've used it on everything from difficult confrontations to uh, firing people, like I said, and even overcoming a sort of oddly acute fear of heights I've developed in certain situations. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed uh, that small talk about fear. To me, finding ways to tackle fear, be fearless, and be confident are really important You know, things to work on in order to grow a successful lifestyle business. Hey, thanks for joining me for this short little episode. If you're interested in the Lifestyle Business Podcast, make sure you sign up free uh, audio updates through the iTunes store. You can do that by going to the iTunes store and searching for Lifestyle Business Podcast and click that subscribe button. Also, you can get on our mailing list where I share all kinds of uh, tips and tricks and, and little things that I think about from time to time. You can get on that at lifestylebusinesspodcast.com. We'll see you next time.